Thank you for watching the TDC Heart Rods YouTube channel. Hey guys, welcome back. <clears throat> so, today we're working on the bed for the 65. Um, so, I need to cut down the front of it. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to cut this thing down. So, you can see my tape that I already have on there. So, I'm going to come in here. I'm cutting 13 and a half inches out between this edge and this edge is 13 and a half inches. So I'll come in here and cut this. Whew! But I wanted to leave a quarter inch gap here. So then when this part is getting re-welded here, I'm not trying to weld right on this edge. Welding on the edge would be fine, except for trying to get this nice rounded edge back into it is just not, I'd be a lot of work. So. I'm gonna weld right on this edge. So then hopefully my total grind mark from there to like here, once when the bed is done. So then I only have a little grind mark on the front and then at a quick glance, you don't even notice that it's been cut down. And then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna cut all the way across that edge, pretty much just in a straight line. There is a little whoop there because the front of the bed does that. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because as you can tell, if I cut it here and then come in here and grind, cut and air chisel out all the spot welds, there's a brace underneath this that this tin, not the tin, the bed floor is welded to. Um, so if I cut all that out and then put that brace, keep the brace there, and then this will now just be the front of the bed. So I'll just weld all along here and up that edge. Well, there's an issue with that because then I get rid of my stake pocket. Well, my original plan was to come up over and like this to keep that pocket. Well, every single one of these things are broke like this. They're not even attached. Like, I'm gonna show you guys that one upside down. It's not even attached. So, to make it a lot easier, um, especially easier on the inside, I'm just going to come in here and cut this pocket out. And then when we move this up to here, then I can take this pocket, weld it back in right here, weld it down there, ta-da! My pocket is back in the front, because I'll definitely, definitely use those for strapping parts in, or my dirt bike, or whatever. Um, so... I for surely want those. Um, yeah, so I got both both sides marked. Um, they are both ready to be cut. So I'm gonna fire up the cutoff wheel. So, I got the front cut off. As you can see here, that's all I wanted. I just wanted this nice thin little rounded edge here. And then I took an air chisel and air chiseled all the floor off of there. You can see where the spot welds were. And as you can see, this front piece of the bed is junk. It really needs to be replaced, but that's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna come in here and grind down all these spot welds across there. And then I'm gonna take a wire wheel to the whole thing. And then I have a, some stuff called rust mort that I'm gonna put over the entire thing that will help it. It's definitely not, this is bad rust. This is not where you should really be using rust mort. I'm just gonna put it on there in hopes that it will slow down what's happening. Um, and then I'm gonna come in and touch up a bunch of these little spots, grind off all of the, the burrs here and here, and then I'll set it up in place. And I'm actually going to, I'm gonna take it and just tack weld it into place and then cut out the center there and set it on the truck. So then I know that 
to my measurement from here to where I want the center of the tire is correct. Cause I don't want to get this whole thing fully welded up and then find out that, oh, I wish I would have cut another half an inch off or something like that. Um, pretty sure I got it measured right, but that's what I'm gonna do just to double check that. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is, well, <clears throat> that wasn't too bad. And I think it's gonna look really nice. Especially, like I don't plan on painting the truck. I don't know if I've said that in a few different videos. So this right here will be the only piece that has to have any paint on it. Unless if I decide to cut down the bed, still uh, back down the back of the bed. Still a little unsure on that. We'll decide that after I put it on the truck. Um, but yeah, so it's all tacked together. I haven't done anything on the inside, but as you can see there, that is gonna look super clean. This black stuff here is where I put the rust mort on because see how rusty that is. And the only thing I'm trying to do, rust mort's acid that's supposed to kill rust. I don't think, I personally don't think it's gonna kill rust that's this cancerous, but at least it'll kind of slow it down. And then we got the front, I mean the center cut out. I do think this brace is gonna get in the way, but we're gonna try to set it down first and see, see what it does. Well, obviously that ain't gonna work. Not at all. So, gotta cut the back of the frame. See where the brace is right there? I need to come in here and go. Good thing got a plasma cutter. Works great and fast. So, that's what I'm gonna do, and then I'll show you guys right. after. So, I've had the bed on and off quite a few times. And last time you guys had seen the back of the frame, on both sides were hitting the back of the bed. Well, I trimmed, uh, I don't know about that much off, but then when I set it on, because I have it channeled so far, the back of the bed was too high. So we're getting ready to set it back, set the bed back on again. But this time I took a pie cut. So you can see the frame still moves. <laughs> took a pie cut out of the frame. We're gonna set the bed on, get the bed all level, and then wherever the frame lands, I'll reach up in with the welder and weld the frame back. Also, how I cut the bed, I left the seat hat channel here where the factory cab mount, I mean bed mount was. We had to cut the whole lip off all the way across. So then it will clear the frame right here. And what else do we do? Oh, because of my aftermarket wheels. The offset's not much, but it is offset just a tiny bit more than the factory Crown Vic ones. We were, we had Monkey on a Stick trying to push the fenders out even after I rolled the wheel well, the lip, and that just wasn't working. So for now, we cut the mounts, both sides, shoved a two by four up in there to push the bed side out enough to make sure it's gonna clear the wheels. And if that does work, then I'm gonna build a brace, obviously take the two by four out, build a brace up in here that will hold the bedside out, extend these pieces out to where we want them. Cause this, I'll probably bring this back in just a little bit, just for looks. Um, yeah, hopefully it will clear this time. So we're gonna go ahead and set that bed back on and see what it looks like. Guys, I think I'm falling in love. I really like it a lot. And I didn't even shorten up the back of the bed at all. I only shortened the front 13 and 5 eighths. And honestly, I kind of like it. Like I go back and forth. I think it would look a little better shorter, but then I love it. So uh, besides that, let me show you the, uh, I need a sweep down here. The pie cuts, where are they at, where are they at? The pie cuts worked out perfect. The, I, so I cut here down, 
I put a uh, 9 sixteenths of a gap and then pie cut it in. And when I set the bed down and it's touching now on both sides, and it sits just where I want it. Like the body line looks great. Um, so I got to build a rear cross member mount for the back. We decided on how we're going to do the front mount, which I will show you that probably as I build it, but we're gonna use this square tubing and this plate. And because of how I shorten the bed, there's these two cross members right here. We're gonna put the plate between the two, the square tubing going down to the frame, and the square tubing will be welded to a piece of angle iron that will sit on top of the frame and then wrap around with a bolt in the side. So it'd be real easy to get it on and off. It'd be real easy to line it back up. It'd be super easy to line it back up, actually. Um, and I think that will work fantastic. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love the look. Um, once again, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video or the other video. Yeah, I don't remember. But I'm leaving in four days, three days, to go drive this thing 300 miles. I haven't drove it. Uh, <laughs> I guess I have. I've drove it in and out of the shop to put the bed on. Woo! But anyways, I got a lot to do and I want to get some testing done on it before I leave. Like make sure the cruise control still works because I had that harness cut apart. Anyways, lots of stuff. But. I am going to get to cutting down some metal and uh, yeah, so I'm going to start building some bed mounts. The bed does have to come back off so I can add some braces and stuff, but uh, I'm going to start building some bed mounts and I'm going to get back to it. So now when we pull it off, when we pull the bed off, I can get up in there. We drilled this little hole. I can tap the frame, drill this hole bigger. It'll line up perfect. And I can get in here and do some nicer welds um, and weld all that out. And then on here, we got a pretty tight gap around here. So we're gonna build some spacers that go from the inside here to the fender well to help pull this bedside out. So that's what we're gonna do now is pull this bed off and build All some right. space. So the bed's back on. It is fully welded all the way around. Um, I still need to put some primer on that. I started to put primer on this side, but ran out, as you can see there. All it is is just the red oxide primer like I put down there on the step. But from a distance, it looks like nobody's even gonna notice it. Um, but what I was gonna show you guys was, let's see if you can see it. If you look real close, right here, the bed has a little bow to it on both sides. And that, like you can kind of see it more if you look right there. Um, at a glance, you don't ever, and you know, only only people that are gonna notice are purists. And at that point, they ain't even gonna like that it's on a Crown Vic chassis, so it doesn't matter. But because the offset of these wheels, I needed more tire clearance. But I got the tire clearance I was looking for by building these spacers right here. So they're, what, they're welded here on both sides, front and back. And it's just square tubing that was cut a little bit longer. I cut these braces out, off, right there. As you can see that, you can see that extension piece that I put in there. So that just holds the bedside out on the front and the back. I cut the braces, 
me and my dad tried to push it out. We just couldn't get it to stay. And then after that, I built those spacers to hold the bedside out. And then I welded the braces back in after that. But yeah, I think it's sweet. It's super awesome. I did take it for a little quick rip around the block and uh, lots of salt. So I don't know exactly what I'm doing about this right now. I wanna put some miles on the truck before I make that decision. But for now, I'm gonna come back in and cut, I mean, put the filler piece that I cut out right there I'm going to put it back in here. Um, and the reason being is so it doesn't do that. Um, and throw gravel up in here. But next step that I'm gonna do, I was gonna make this video just about the bed, but I feel like I can add a little bit more and I wanna put as much in each video as I can. So we're gonna work on the lights. That's the next thing I need besides the front bumper to build a, that's like the last thing I need besides a front bumper to make this thing legal to drive down the road. Um, so I'll show you what I got. We, I ordered some headlights for a Jeep. They are an LED, just seven inch round light. I think they look super awesome. But the benefit to it being with the Jeep is, for one, it's just a standard seven inch headlight. Well, it comes with this pigtail. And then we have our tail lights are pretty messed up. The 1157 tab in there is no good. So rather than buying this whole housing, I went this route and bought this piece right here. So, and these LED light bulbs. So I'll just drill a hole. I'll cut out the old one, drill a hole, bend these tabs over and wire these into the Crown Vic harness. Should be really, really straightforward and simple. Um, on the front, what I'm gonna do is, this is the stock Crown Vic plug here. And so I'm gonna take this pigtail, this is headlight, this is marker and turn signal, which works out kind of perfect because they're already in a small harness that I can run down, and this is marker and turn signal and headlight. So I can splice it here and here into the new light bulbs, and it should be really simple. Like, I gotta do the same thing on the marker and turn signals as I do the tail lights, where I gotta cut this piece out and splice that in, but really that should be, that should be real simple. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this unbolted, pull this shroud off and get some of this old truck wiring out of there. Um, and get to splicing some wires together and see if we can get some headlights and taillights on this thing. bet this thing hasn't had working lights since the 80s. Man, who knows? But <clears throat> I love it. It's awesome. Super sweet. And then bad boys. Of course, the camera don't do any of it justice, but look how bright those are. <whistles> love it. So next thing, after turning the lights off so my battery don't go dead, is... Work on the tail lights. So this tail lights have the same problem. Can you see how the piece is all broken out there? So what I gotta do is I have some more of these. These ones are a little bigger and bulkier, but they'll do the exact same thing. We'll just pull those out, put them in. I got the factory tail lights here that I'm going to pull the wiring out of. This has way too many lights for what I need. I'll just run it down to the basics. Um, but yeah, so I'll use this harness and I have, oh, there it is right there. 
there's the Crown Vic harness. So this will plug right into there and come up to this light. And I got the same thing over there for that light. And then we will have working lights all the way around. And then the next step to making it legal will be the front bumper, but I don't know when I'm gonna get to the bumper. But for now, we're just gonna get to them tail lights and see if we can get lights and turn signals all the way around on this thing. All right, so I already got that side done on the tail lights. There's no lens on it, but you guys get the idea. So I wanted to show you guys how I'm doing this wiring, just in case if anybody wanted to know. So I'm using all the Crown Vic stuff, like I'd mentioned. But the biggest thing is on the Vic is there's two separate, like on the Crown Vic, there's four, there's two tail lights, tail light bulbs and two turn signal bulbs. I just trimmed the harness down. So then there's only one of each. And then I, so you got, you can't, I was originally trying to just use a single 1157 bulb right there. That won't work with this harness. And then after I thought of this, I like this idea way better. So what, what we got here are the stock 3157s that I trimmed down to just one bulb per thingy. So there's marker and turn marker and brake light, and then this is turn signal. So I just siliconed in a body plug to plug off that back hole, drilled these holes out, I mean drilled these holes and then shaped them to where I can turn these and I can pull that in and out. It's, you can see where it's trimmed back up in there. So you can just turn it just like factory and pull them in and out. I will, shouldn't ever have to, honestly, because I can just pull the lens off and pop the light bulb out. But if I ever needed to, I can. And then to fit them nice, to get them to fit nice, the two other bulbs that were in there, I pulled the gaskets off and stuck on there. And man, do they fit perfect. They fit super nice. So now I just got to run a little electrical tape on that, clean it up, and then go down and plug it in there. I need to zip tie a couple of things up and put the ground up. I haven't put the ground on yet. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys how I did that. Um, they do poke out past a little bit, but they clear the light bulb. I mean, the not the light bulb, the tail light lens. Um, so yeah, I'm going to uh, go ahead and hook guys, those up. I made a mistake. Look what I did. But it'll be all right. I'll get them. But the exciting part, very exciting part, is we got lights besides... That one's broken. We got a good one. Very awesome. Let's go check out the front as I skip up here out of excitement. Check it out. <whistles> Anyways, um, so now we have lights front and back. We got turn signals. We got everything we need to make it legal um, except for a front bumper. But I'm going to go license this thing today. We'll get a bumper put on it tonight. I hope we'll see. I don't know, um, but yeah. So in this video, we got the bed installed, trimmed down, lights on it front and back. So now I can go cruise this thing up and down the highway. So that'll be it for this video. Thanks again so much for your guys' support. It really truly means a ton to me. I have not been this excited about uploading videos in a very long time, but because of your guys' support, is the reason why I'm doing it. It makes it so much fun when I see the views, see that people are commenting and entertained in the stuff that I'm doing. Um, I just wanna say thank you very much. Please consider subscribing and we'll see you on the next one.